Hey, Canucks fans, it's time for another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Canuck Clay. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, July the 18th. Subscribe now for Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Reminder to all you members out there, a couple things happening today. For franchise and Hall of Fame members, we're doing our monthly Zoom call. 8.15 to 9.15 tonight. It's a bit of a weird time, but I'm going to church at 6.30. Got to give myself time to get home and get changed. So 8.15 to 9.15 tonight for Franchise and Hall of Fame members. The Zoom link is in our the community tab in, in on my YouTube channel. And then for everyone at 10 p.m., so I'll take a quick break at 10 p.m., will be my weekly live stream right here on YouTube. So I hope you can join me for the live stream at 10 and for the Zoom chat if you're a franchise or Hall of Fame member at 8.15. Lots of things to get to, so many good questions. There's about 14 or 15 of them. I'm gonna try and get through all of them actually. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly, but I I really wanna honor the fact that you guys sent in questions, some really good questions. And there's been a lot of good activity on my channel. Gained a lot of subscribers, almost uh, 50 subscribers over the past, over the weekend so far, because I think the Canucks are now in the news. Trading for Jason Dickinson, setting their expansion either their their protected list which i talked about i talked about those two things yesterday and i'm seeing a lot of activity on the channel which i am grateful for so let's get to your questions right away casey says this why add the trustworthy to the intro you seem like an honest guy who wouldn't trust your opinion of the canucks casey i appreciate that in all seriousness yeah i used to say um subscribe for canucks insight that's positive and timely i say trustworthy too because you can be um positive and or timely for sure but then I also want to be known as trustworthy. And from a standpoint, I'm not, I'm not just saying things to get clicks or that I've actually put some thought into, into, uh, you know, into what I'm saying. So it's part of the whole value added proposition. I know I used to say positive and timely, but I added the word trustworthy, but I appreciate uh, that you checking in and making sure and, and for the affirmation. Yes, I, I think I'm a pretty trustworthy guy, but I have no problem also saying that, especially to new viewers who are thinking about subscribing because um, exact it's a, it's a split. I look at my analytics, 50% of the people that watch these videos are subscribed, thank you, and 50% aren't. So I want to convert some of those people to subscribers, obviously. Reaction Club, if Edler does not get signed by another team, do you think he'll be back with the Canucks next season? I think that's, and then Awesome Watson says, do you see Stetcher coming back if Edler walks in free agency? So let's talk about both. Edler's taking a risk by by going out and, and making himself available to other teams, but you got to think that a team will will take him up on that as long as he's reasonable with his contract, his money demands. If he does not get signed and loops back to the Canucks, the risk is that there's the Canucks won't have enough money either, especially if they've gone after some own, some of uh, some other defensemen to fill those spots. So that's the risk that Edler is willing to take and is going to take. Do I think he'll be back with the Canucks next season? if he doesn't get signed by another team. Yes, I, I do think if he doesn't get signed by another team, he'll find a way to get, find himself back to the Canucks, but I actually think he'll sign with another team first, which leads me to another question, Austin Watson, about the about do you think Stetcher coming back? Do you see Stetcher coming back if he walks, if Edler walks? I don't, at least not this season, because Stetcher still is under contract one more year to the Detroit Red Wings, so I don't think it'll happen this season, but I think it should be an option down the road. It will be interesting to see if Seattle takes Stetcher in the expansion draft. Noah, if Bowie is not taken by Seattle, do you think he makes the team next season? And if yes, oh, sorry, and top six winger this offseason. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I'll do that again. I, I combined two questions. Noah, if Bowie is not taken by Seattle, do you think he makes the team next season? And if yes, how many games do you think we'll see him play in? So if Bowie is not taken by Seattle, which I, I don't think he will. I think Seattle will take either Hope B or Lind ahead of Madison Bowie. Do I think he makes the team next season? I think he will be either bottom pairing or or the seventh defenseman. So therefore, I, I could see him playing maybe anywhere between 20 and 40 games. You know, closer to 40 if he's a bottom pair, closer to 20 if he's like the next man up, so to speak. And the O says this, do you think the Canucks will be able to get a top four D-man and a top six winger this off season? You know, the Jason Dickinson trade that was some a uh, good piece of business from a standpoint of they didn't uh they didn't move any money out but it only cost them a third round draft pick i could see them um going after definitely both a top four winger sorry a top four d-man and a top six winger will they get both maybe but it depends on the quality of both i think they'll get one for sure and i think now the priority has to be a d-man because if you're losing both edler and hamnick and maybe schmidt but we'll see about that 
Uh, that would be a trade, though, as opposed to Edler and having a career UFAs. At least with the top six wingers, Dickinson kind of solidifies things. So now you can go Pedersen, Horvat, Dickinson down the middle, and then you have Besser and Miller on the top line, and then you have Pearson, Podkolzin, and Hoglander as your wingers. So really, yeah, you, you still need one more, even if it's a third-line winger, say, to play. If you go back with Hor- Horvat, Pearson, and Hoglander, then your third line could be something like a Dickinson with a Pod Colson, and then you still need one more winger, or you, you play someone like Tyler Mott or Matthew Highmore up there. So we'll, we'll see. But yeah, I think the priority would be the top four d man though. Amit says this, who should the Canucks target in free agency? Oh, that, oh, I put these one after the other in, in, you know, on purpose. I think from a winger, someone like Brock McGinn can play. He's only 27 years old, can play both wings. And then on D side, I love Mike Riley on the left. And I love someone like Cody Cece on the right, both young guys in their, in their late 20s, so young enough still. So those are three people that I would. Jaden Schwartz, I've always liked, but he's going to be really expensive. Noah says, um, oh, so second question from Noah, I think. Yes. Hi, Clay. Do you think Jason Dickinson can take on the opponent's top lines as a defensive player? Just like how Travis Green would put Horvat out there whenever McDavid was on. Yes, Noah, I've seen some of the stats, um, the breakdowns for Dickinson. He's not the biggest guy ever. He's got decent size, 6'2", 200. He's not massive, but um, he, he can skate well. So I think he can try and play a similar role that Horvat did and free Horvat up to concentrate more on offense. I think that, uh, that's a really important part of this deal. So yes, to answer your question, I think that could happen. Beauty Breaks, do you think the Kraken will pick Holtby? Um, I think there's a good chance, especially if they work out a deal with the Canucks to retain a bit of the salary. We'll see if that happens. So, but I think there's a good chance that, that the Seattle does take Holtby. Adrian says, do you think what Montreal did today, protecting Jake Allen rather than Carey Price, is going to increase the chances that Seattle will take Holtby instead of Lind or another young forward? Yeah, given that... Um, yeah, that's so tricky. I think it's going to be between Holtby and Lind is who I would take if I was Seattle. Do I think what Montreal did, meaning that Jake Allen is now off the market? Yeah, that, that would seem to indicate that um, Holtby, it would increase Holtby's, Holtby's chances of being taken for sure. So maybe that's the way I'm going is Holtby as the inside track and then maybe Cole Lind as well. Christopher DeMarco says this, Carey Price waived his mo- no movement clause for the Seattle Expense Draft. Do you think Seattle takes him or is his contract too much? Have the feeling it's a little bit too much Yes, he played very well in the Stanley Cup Finals or Stanley Cup Playoffs. Faded a bit in the Finals, but he was playing against a very strong team. That's a lot of money, and just would Seattle rather get younger guys who are cheaper? And yes, you probably want one veteran, so they're not going to take Price and Holtby. They'll probably take one or the other or another veteran like that. So I, I you know, if I was Seattle, I take Holtby over Price, given that you're out from under that contract after a year if if it doesn't work out. Good question though, Arlo. Do you think that if New Jersey takes Luke Hughes, the Canucks should be worried about Quinn jumping ship to play with his brother someday? Um, yeah, Luke. Uh, New Jersey would then have Jack and Luke. Would Quinn jump ship? I don't know. It's got to make sense money-wise, and there's a lot of things that have to happen before that, i.e. his next contract and maybe his next two contracts. So, no, I don't worry about that too much right now. And because New Jersey picks ahead of Vancouver, we can't do anything if they indeed take Luke. So we'll see. I guess we'll find out um, on Friday night. LA Women's Hoops, do you like it when the Canucks make a trade with a team in their division? I'm against making trades with teams in your division. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say I like it, but I, I don't worry about it as much as, as I, th- I say other people do. Yeah, I get the whole point. You're going to play against them six or seven times in the regular season, and God forbid in the playoffs, you don't want the player that you traded away to make be the difference maker uh, against your team. But it is quite rare. Maybe that's why teams don't do it. But I, I don't think it's a deal breaker either. So if if it's the best asset that they're going to get back in a trade, then I would still be open to it. it. It doesn't bother me as much as it might bother others. Maestro, do you think the Canucks will make a big trade this summer? I do. And I think, uh, as Thomas Dranson and others have said, a lot of the work that they put into these transactions or potential trades before the expansion list were were, were solidified, you, you simply don't walk away from that work. That that. It might not have happened before yesterday, but there's still a good chance that deals like that can be consummated throughout the summer because they've done all the legwork. So yeah, I do think that the Canucks will make a big trade this summer. Jasper, who do you see leaving the Canucks first? Erickson, Beagle, Vertanen, and Roussel. I think I'd go in order. Vertanen, Roussel, 
Beagle Erickson. Only because Vertanen, I think, is the prime buyout candidate, and I've heard Roussel's name. But Roussel, Beagle, and Erickson, remember the Canucks, I think you'd rather get out from underneath those contracts as uh, and let them die off after a year as opposed to you know buying them out and then having them on the books for double the time, two more years. Whereas Vertanen, he's only, he's, because he's under 27 years of age, he, you get more money relief um, than the other three guys. So I think Vertanen would be the, the guy who leaves the Canucks first. Kid Jovan says this, do you think the Canucks made a good choice exposing Cole Lind? Um, I, I wouldn't classify it as a good choice, but it's, this, it's the logical choice because you're not going to expose any of the big four of Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, or Miller. Tanner Pearson, there's a handshake deal that we wouldn't expose him. Tyler Mott, we don't have any player that does what he can do. So then really, um, given the trade with, for Jason Dickinson, you're not going to trade for a guy and then expose him right away, or at least we weren't going to. So um, Colin, I want him to do well, but I'm not convinced that he's going to do really well. And Jason Dickinson, you already have a proven third-line player. So um, I, I, I was fine with the choice. I know a lot of people don't like the fact we might lose Lynn, but um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that choice. Marcus, do you think Benning will seriously consider getting Hyman? Uh, I know there's interest, but I don't think the Canucks are going to be in the running at the very end. They simply don't have the money. And I'd be wary of signing a guy who's got had a couple, you know, at least a significant knee injury, thanks to our guy, Alex Edler. Um, I wouldn't sign him for anything longer than four or five years. So six, seven, eight, forget it. So do I think they'll seriously consider him? I think they'll, they'll, they have and they will continue to kick the tires. But I'm not convinced that that interest is very, very serious. And finally, Lucas says, uh, Jim Benning was going to trade Horvat for Pavel Buchnevich. You probably have seen this, but ridiculous. What are your thoughts, Clay? Yeah, I don't buy too much into it. I think maybe the Canucks trade uh, called the Rangers and said, what would it take to get Pavel Buchnevich here? And they said, Bo Horvat. And then Jim Benning hopefully hung up the phone. Buchnevich is a good player. I've heard Pod Kozin actually... A comparable, he's been a comparable listed for Pod Colson, which will be fine. A good 40 point player, but um, I don't think um, I wouldn't give up our, our captain and one of our best players for him right now. And I know there's a bit of a story there because Jim Benning has gone out the record and said he would love to have a Russian on the team to help with Pod Colson's um, development and transition, but I don't think um, you do it at the expense of Bo Horvat. All right, guys, that was a lot of great questions. Thanks for asking all of them. I hope I answered them to your satisfaction. And don't forget, uh, leave a comment below on a reaction to any of those answers. 8.15 tonight, Zoom chat for Hall of Fame and franchise members. The link is on the community tab. 10 p.m. tonight, uh, live stream for everyone, my, my weekly live stream. So I hope you can join me for those tonight. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Incredible, Nux Fan number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shea Family Channel, Jamie Sports Sakamore, Shannon Hollingworth, and Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support as always. And thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. So subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of the channel if you'd like to. Leave a comment if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other, and we'll see you tonight. God bless, and go Canucks go.